Okay, so this tutorial might be in a couple different parts. Um, the uh, upcoming assignment is a, about kind of a modular design within a grid. And today in class, we looked a little bit at coordinates. We looked a little bit at uh, using translate and, and rotate to move shapes and objects around. Um, but one thing we didn't really talk about is how to effectively generate um, a whole bunch of copies, not as part of an animation that cycles through, but a whole bunch of copies all at once. Um, the, the example I did in class was like a, a spiral. So the shape was um, generating and it was filling up the space, but it's only because the background was in the setup. So it wasn't refreshing the screen at all. And in that instance, it was just fine. But really what we want here is uh, a still graphic. We want to create a, uh, a generative pattern um, that happens all at once. So to start this discussion, I created just a line. And I guess my idea here is, you know, what if I start 100 pixels in from the top and bottom, the top and bottom here, and I'll do the same thing. I want to have a bunch of lines that go all the way down and stop uh, within 100 uh, pixels of, of the bottom here. So we just get this, this little grid. So we have x and y and x and y. So if I really wanted to, uh, let's, so let's uh, assume that maybe there's a 10 pixel um, distance from this first line to the second line. So I've just created another line in here, right? And paste it again. So I'll say that's 120. I'll paste it again. I'll say that's 130. I'll paste it again. All right, someone hopefully in the video is saying, stop, this is not a good idea. All right, this is going to take forever. <laughs> why, would I, why would I just copy and paste that, right? This doesn't seem like a, a good strategy. <clears throat> I could create a variable. So let's call this uh, let y equal 100. And what I could do is, and this is going to be just as absurd, so hang in there with me. So let's just put y there. And then uh, we'll do uh, y equals y plus 10. Seems kind of silly, but now I can just copy that code. And I'll put it there and copy that and put it there. So what I've done is say, hey, at the very beginning of the frame, let y be 100, right? And so that's the y position, it's, the, it's height there. So let's just see what we get. So I get two of the lines. And because I'm using a variable, now I don't have to um, modify. It's a little bit easier on the copy and pasting. This is the silliest. If I see you doing this, I will. <laughs> Uh, I will get uh, um, crazy angry and be like, no, this was for demonstration purposes only, right? Even with all this copy and pasting, like you can see, I haven't really made it that far down the page, right? I should name this channel like Absurd Approaches to uh, Coding with Dane Webster, <laughs> right? So hopefully you see that this is uh, not a good idea either. But the one thing um, uh, maybe if I were to keep going with this, um, approach, eventually I could say, you know, once I get to within a hundred of this, oh, I guess I can't believe there's all that code there. I'll copy it one more time to see if I make it all the way down there. It actually looks like it, uh, like it does. In fact, um, probably one too many. If I want to, let's do print Y. So hopefully, uh, oops, I'm gonna put that somewhere far away. So let's see what it gets to. Oh, 730. So I have just a few too many. Let's uh, close this out. Uh, one, two, uh, is that right? Let's see here. Oh, and I closed my little print here. 690, so I need one more. Seriously, don't for a second think this is the way that I'm uh, suggesting that you need to do this. <laughs> so let's copy one more time and put a line there. 
and let's see what we get. 700, that's exactly what I wanted, right? So I was able to uh, create this 100 uh, pixel buffer, right? By doing a ridiculous copy and pasting of code. And I made it a little bit easier by using a variable here, right? So that once I had this, um, this setup, right? Let's create a variable and we'll start and we'll say it's 100 and we'll draw a line. And then we'll say, you know what? Uh, uh, I, I want this to keep going until it gets to 700. So let's do another. And it's still not at 700 because I checked it with my little print down here, right? Um, uh, so I just keep doing it, right? So I keep saying, hey, the, let's add another 10. Let's draw a line. It's still not at 100. So let's take that variable and add another 10. It's still not at, and draw a line. It's still not at that variable, right? So we want to do this in the short <laughs> way. So let's go back up here. Oops, don't want that. Let's just delete everything. Boy, what a mess, right? This is a lot of scrolling through there. And let's take Y out of there. So um, I do, uh, let's put it back to where it was. All right, so again, <laughs> let me reiterate, don't do what I just did. Um, I wanted to make a point that, it, you know, you don't have to really think about coding efficiency right out the bat, um, but you don't want to do silly things like I just did. But it did illustrate a concept of creating a variable, iterating, you know, like adding to it an increment, you know, as we go along until it reached a threshold. And that's what the for loop does for us. So uh, we start with just the word for, okay? So just like we did before, we'll say let, in fact, we'll do it the same way, y equal 100. And then the other thing, and so that's the first part, right? First, so first we declare this variable. We're going to use this as in our little counting machine. And then we'll say, you know, and, and important within the for loop, so we declare what this variable is. And we, you can use anything. It could be I, it could be a name, you know, a, a, sorry, a, a, any kind of character, a name or something. Usually, a lot of times, you'll see I. So in a for loop, you'll lot of see I because it's used for counting like an index. So in this case, um, I uh, want to start at 100. And then I put a semicolon to stop the for loop to basically say this is one component. We, we don't put a comma in here like we would for these other arguments. So the next thing is I want this to go all the way until it's either less than uh, or equal to, or if you, as long as it's um, uh, any of these conditions, right? If I just say equal, if it doesn't equal, it won't work. But I want it to say as long as y is less than, and that's just the little less than symbol, right? This would be greater than. It would say y would be greater in, uh, than um, because the, the open um, uh, arrows pointed at it. So this plus equal to, what was it? We wanted to go all the way up to 700, right? And then we're going to say, uh, and again, a semicolon afterwards. So um, for this loop, let's start at 100 with this variable. And let's check. And as long as it's less than 700, let's execute this code. And every time you execute the code, let's go back and iterate a little bit more. And then we'll test it again. So y, and this time we'll do plus equals. And this is just the shorthand within the, the for loop. But it's just like saying, uh, y equals uh, y plus whatever. But that within the for loop, that's kind of clunky to do it that way. So we do plus equals 10, right? So this just said, uh, let's add 10 to the y, just like we were doing with that ridiculously long piece of code. And then within a for loop, you're always going to have a open and closed curly bracket. So we have the for loop. You can see this, the spacing here doesn't really matter. And the spacing in here doesn't matter. What does matter is that we have these three components. Um, and we do have these uh, semicolons to separate these here. In fact, I'm going to leave them a little spaced so that we can um, uh, break this down a little bit. So the other thing is, all I'm doing is, one thing I'm doing is generating numbers. And the other thing is I'm counting to say, just continue to do this thing. So I could 
Um, I'm going to just um, take this out of here. And I'm just to prove my point, let's do ellipse. Um, let's do a random uh, width and a random height. And we'll just say 25 and 25. So I want to show two things here in this. Hopefully this won't uh, be <laughs> overly annoying. In fact, let's just do it this way. Let's take the background and put it in there. So what we should see is this dancing all over the place. Uh, like I did in class today, if I slow down the program and I just give it a frame rate of uh, so it's generating however many loops. So it's creating these many uh, ellipses, right? So if I took uh, 700 and divided it by 10, right, by 10, I would get 70, right? So I get uh, 70 ellipses drawn on the screen in every frame, which is just a really slow rate right now. It's creating them in random places. So sometimes we create a loop just to count through how many times we want an action to happen, okay? In our case here, and let's, uh, we'll just comment that out, maybe put it down below. We'll come back to it later if we need to. I can't imagine that we're gonna need it, but. So let's go back to this line. So in this case, not only do we want it to go through 70 times, we also wanna use the numbers that are generated from this, the, the Y variable, uh, to drive the position. So let's just say Y and why, and you see there are my, my lines. Now, it's not refreshing and blinking because I'm not using random where it's just generating this, but every frame, it's drawing every single one of those lines, right? It goes through here, it says I'm frame one, and let's draw, as we uh, figured out, 70 lines. What do they want to say? And I get done, and then it does that again on frame two. Uh, it starts to show the speed of the computer. We're drawing 70 lines uh, across the screen, and it's 60 frames per second, right? So that's a lot of lines that it's continually drawing. And obviously, this is just a small task for it to do. So let's uh, break this down one last time. So uh, the for loop, it's uh, three things. Oops. We need a variable to count or count and test with. Um, we have a condition that needs to be evaluated or tested, if you want to think this way. And we have uh, an iteration. Um, that just tells us how many, uh, uh, it's a counter, if you want to think of it this way. And in uh, previous examples of coding, there are ways that we could just create our own counter to do something. Um, we could, I, I won't even get into it, but we could use an if or while statement and count within the, with the draw package. But the for loop is really the name of the game. And this is, uh, we want to use this a lot. Later on for this assignment, we're going to use a for loop within a for loop so that we can create a grid of um, this design that's also going to be helpful for us later on when we start examining images because an image is a grid of pixels, right? There are so many pixels going side to side and so many pixels going up and down and we can examine those and do some really uh, interesting things with it. Where am I at? Almost perfectly at 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to uh, stop there. Um, if you look at this and you're like, wait a minute, uh, I think I kind of get it, but there's still some things, that is totally fine. At this point, all, don't worry about like, where do you put the semicolon and how does that work? This seems all weird to me. Just remember that there are three parts. Um, well, let me see. So we have a keyword for, we have uh, within the parentheses some, some code here, and we have this uh, an open and close bracket so that anything that's inside of here is going to get executed. So that's the basic structure. The big thing is that it's made up of three components. We have some variable 
that we're going to use. We have a condition to test, right? Uh, I could say that this would be, um, let's say it's the uh, 500, right? So I could test it that way. What if I wanted to go every five pixels? Right, I can make this type. What if I wanted to make this interactive and say it's wherever the mouse X is? Right, So that condition can be lots of different things. And again, like I showed before, we can use this to just count, as we did with just counting out 70 ellipses to put randomly in space. Or we can specifically use this variable to drive some counting, some position, some animation, any of these things right across the space. Um, and there's a lot of flexibility in here. These numbers can be different. Um, we could make it, uh, um, sometimes you'll see plus plus uh, in here, which just means go one at a time, like when you're counting a list. But in that case, uh, when we ran this, all we got was just a block, right? This is, uh, the lines are so close together, it just looks like a rectangle, um, which we really don't need a for loop to do for us. So we'll put that back in time. All right, all right. now I'm over my 15 minutes, but I really want to explain this. If you're looking at this and thinking, you know, to hell with this, I don't want to, I'm not going to figure out how the for loop works. Um, you're really going to have to use it as you go forward to do anything interesting, especially when we get to the image analysis stuff, which will be a lot of fun. Um, so it will look a little weird at first. Think about those big pictures. There'll be follow-up tutorials on using this in, in different contexts and also how to create the grid. All right, happy coding.